Hi there. Uh, so this is my second video. Um, in my first video, I kind of laid out what my intentions are for this channel, so I'm not going to get really into that, but I will say that these videos really right now are just intended for me. So if you are a person and you're not me and you're watching this, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please leave me a comment to let me know that you did watch or check it out even for a couple seconds. I kind of just want this channel to be a place where I can vent my thoughts on YouTube. I'm 34 years old. There's not really a ton of people around me that care to talk about this stuff or even if they want to care they really don't know what I'm talking about so I thought I could start off kind of by going over the youtubers that I really love those I'm not too much of a fan of um, and kind of why so I mentioned in my last video that I spend a lot of my time, a lot of my watch time on YouTube watching members of the Vlog Squad. And if you don't know who that is, um, there's kind of the leader that's David Dobrik, huge uh, YouTuber. He makes amazing, incredible videos. He's really kind of, he and the Vlog Squad, but it's, he's really the driving force um, that is in my opinion, really kind of starting to bridge the gap between mainstream celebrity and um, internet fame. I'm a huge fan of their whole friend group and probably top of my list which might come as a shock to some people is uh, Carly and Aaron's channel. There's not a ton of structure to their channels. Um, a lot of people call them the lazy member sorry if you heard that, the lazy members of the vlog squad, um, and they kind of own up to that. But through watching their channel, I've come to find that I appreciate more the YouTubers that have fantastic personalities that really can just have that back and forth banter. And of course, having a joint channel between the two of them, they really can kind of base their channel around those conversations between the two of them. Um, so I really like to just put their videos on an autoplay uh, while I'm doing things around the house and it's just nice to have that feeling like they're a couple girlfriends over um, and having funny conversations. And along the same vein, I get those same vibes from Zane and Heath. So they're probably my next favorites, I guess you'd say. Um, love Zane, love Zane on his own. I think he's just hilarious and sweet. Just everything good in the world. Um, but he and Heath together are just a hilarious combination. Um, so sometimes I'll even watch the edits, Zane and Heath's the best moments and things like that. Um, so their coffee talks and uh, really a lot of their conversations they have together and really kind of the affection they have within that little bromance is just really sweet. So they're another, they're up there with my favorites. And I do love Heath's standalone videos. I really love his, his relationship with Mariah. It seems very pure, very genuine, uh, very loving, and I really hope that they, you know, make it and end up getting married one day. I am a fan of Jason's videos. Obviously, he kind of goes along the ride with David's antics, right? So a lot of his footage seems to be kind of the B-roll footage, if you will, of David's vlogs, um, but then also kind of his day-to-day -day life. Some of it is a little bit family channel-y where he has his children, uh, Charlie and Wyatt. Um, some of it is him hanging out with other members of the vlog squad, and a lot of it is just him by himself. He seems to be pretty comfortable in front of a camera, even in public, talking, making cracking dad jokes. Um, and I th think that he's just a very smart and talented comedian and uh, because of that I I can enjoy watching his vlogs even if there's not really a whole lot going on. The actual ideas he has for his vlogs are not the best um, but he makes up for it in personality. Again, that's more important to me. And so I pretty much watch the rest of the vlog squad as well. Scotty Sire, Jeff Wittick, Achis Joe, Josh Peck. I'm not as quick to watch their videos, but, but I do watch them nonetheless. And then of course there are some obvious ones. Jenna Marbles, I mean she's got this down pat. She can really just do anything. It's her personality that I come back for, but um, kind of by proxy, Julian Solomita. I love their relationship. I love him on his own. Um, I watch his videos too. Another obvious, Shane Dawson. I mean just fantastic content. Uh, he's a lovable person. The project-based work that he does, I'm always tuning in for that. Philip DeFranco. I didn't mention him. I feel like he's kind of a given, kind of along the lines of Shane Dawson and, and Jenna Marbles. He's my daily news. I uh, love the guy. Um, I like his, his kind of centrist and very um, diplomatic approach to topics. I really like Philip DeFranco. Um, I would say I always have, but he kind of had a douchey bro -y thing going on 10 years ago and, and he cops to that. So, like the dude. As for who I hate on the platform, I, I don't 
know that there is anyone that I like super hate. If there is anyone that I really don't like, chances are I'm not tuning into their content. Um, but there, there's a handful of creators that I kind of have mixed feelings about, um, that I enjoyed at one point and, and now not so much, or I just feel conflicted. So instead of going through a list of YouTubers that I hate, it's more kind of, let's go through what's complicated. Trisha Paytas. So um, I mentioned in my first video that I watched her back in the old days of YouTube, probably been watching her somewhere around a decade, maybe. And you know, Trisha's Trisha. And um, there are times that I'll watch her and I, I really kind of feel for her, like her. Then of course, it gets to a point where some drama comes up and sometimes I'll tune in just to see what's going on. Um, that's kind of how I learned about the vlog squad because of all of her breakup videos videos with Jason back in the summer of uh, 2018, I think it was. Um, the drama videos can be kind of entertaining, but there are times that I really disagree with her. There are times where her content, the trolley content, I just can't take it anymore. So currently, um, I think I'm subscribed but not following. Um, so I'm not sure what's been going on with her lately, aside from giving her two cents on the Nikocado Avocado Stephanie Sue situation, which I'm not entirely sure what she said. I wasn't gonna sit through a one hour video. Um, I just didn't care. But yeah, I'll probably kind of keep going off and on with Trisha watching her content and taking breaks because I need it. It's kind of a headache and I feel my own mental well-being kind of dipping a little bit <laughs> when I watch too much of her, her videos. Gabby Hanna. Um, yeah, this is probably the trickiest one of all. I probably started watching Gabby's videos about two years ago, around the same time that I was watching, started watching Vlog Squad content. Um, I'm very interested in her and her life. Excuse me. I'm very interested in her and her life. Um, I do think she puts out good content. Um, even when it's kind of lazy, it's still entertaining. Uh, her podcast with her best friend Irene, so entertaining, sounds so much like the conversations I have with my friends. Um, but at her core, um, I think she's somebody that has a lot of things to figure out and doesn't quite understand that she has a lot of things to figure out. And I'm probably going to be making videos about her. I think she's very problematic and I don't think she owns up to it. Um, so of course, situations are gonna keep arising that keep showing her true colors and until she grasps uh, who she is and, and, and kind of the role that she takes in these situations, I think that's just gonna keep happening. We're just gonna see that over and over again and that's just the way things are. Jeffree Star and pretty much everyone within the beauty community. There was a time a couple years ago where I was really intrigued by by the tutorials really and then and then from the tutorials you saw uh, beauty influencers kind of getting a little more creative with their content doing challenges um, and just like really unique looks and things like that and kind of went beyond tutorials and um, that's when I kind of discovered James Charles and Jeffree Star and, and people within um, this kind of age of beauty YouTubers. I liked Jeffree Star at first. I think I learned about him through Shane's uh, series. He's about my age, uh, so I can only imagine kind of the hardships he went through um, in his teen years and early 20s and just being just different. And he does carry an air to himself that sometimes I like and sometimes it gets under my skin. He's a little bit older than, you know, most of this crew of beauty influencers. So he does carry himself in a way that is, his demeanor can be classy, he can be very uh, articulate and, and tempered in the way he, he speaks. At the same time, I do think that he is a little smug and I think he, I think he, he wants to come across that way. Um, and I, I don't think he's quite there where he has what it takes to to be able to pass off as smug. I still think that kind of the way he carries himself is still a little tacky. Sorry, um, might be an unpopular opinion. Obviously, he's a very good business person. We don't even know how many millions of dollars he makes in a year. It's just insane. Uh, so clearly he's smart and he's doing something right. Where I think I think he's lacking, sometimes I think he's lacking in his own craft. I think that he's built a following. I think that he's a very, um, he's a very polarizing character and that brings a lot of fantastic marketing to his businesses. Um, so that's clearly making him rich. But is he 
as smart as he comes across, I don't know when it comes to things like actual makeup. Obviously, I'm not a makeup artist. Um, I know a thing or two, but when I am looking for uh, beauty influencers who might teach me something, I want to know that they are smart when it comes to not just the art of makeup, but also the science of the face and what parts of the face should be lifted, what parts of the face should be contoured, um, shapes and, and how each person's face differs. And there was something that Shane Dawson said in a video, and sorry, this is just like something that irked me. Shane mentioned that Jeffrey taught him when applying your contour always brush in an upward motion because that lifts your face and if you brush in a downward motion that drags your face down and it makes everything fall and I thought yeah that sounds like it makes sense until you really think about it for more than a second um, you know if you think about it you where you place the brush on your face first is uh, where you're going to deposit most of the product. So that technique sounds to me like putting a, a big chunk of contour right here on my cheek and then feathering it up to my to my temple to nothing up there, which is opposite of what it should be. You should have, uh, you know, obviously more depth, more contour up here, feathered down to blend in with the rest of your face. I know that it's not a big deal in and of itself, but that alone, it kind of, it gets under my skin in the same way that when bronzer came out, I was just like, why are we using a product that both contours and highlights at the same time? It doesn't make sense. And I meant to point out here that the whole point of this makeup tip was to say that, hey, if you drag your skin upwards, that's better than dragging your skin down where your skin will sag I guess uh, but the truth of the matter is whether you're tugging and dragging at your skin in upward motion downward sideways it doesn't matter you're gonna stretch your skin and guess where it's going to go it's going to hang because of gravity and I also recognize that it's strange that I'm this hung up on this one little thing but that's why I'm here in my room talking to myself is anybody else amazed that we can trust people to know things and they can just feed us just bull crap when we buy it. Um, but someone somewhere came up with a line of reasoning that sounded like it made sense. Um, and so people believe them. So, you know, more power to Jeffrey for, for his confidence. Um, but I'm probably not going to be taking advice from him, um, at least when it comes to makeup. Business, maybe. James Charles, uh, don't care too much to talk about him. Used to like his videos. I was really impressed with what he was able to do at such a young age. I'm still impressed um, by everything he's been able to do at such a young age. Um, however, he's still young, and that's something I don't think he he himself understands, is that he doesn't know how to rein in his... He doesn't seem to know how to rein in his emotions and still can be problematic. He seems to want to give off that Jeffree Star air that, you know, I am classy and I am pulled together. Um, I am professional, but um, problems arise. He doesn't seem to know how to handle them in, in the moment. Um, and that's unfortunate. And uh, overall, I'm just kind of bored with him. Nikocado Avocado, I've mentioned a couple times, I'll be honest, I don't know that I've ever watched one of his videos all the way through. Um, I only learned about who he was via the Trisha Paytas drama that ensued like about a year ago. That could be way off. Um, but essentially, Trisha Paytas ghosted on him a couple years ago uh, when they were supposed to collab. She never apologized. Then here, about like I said, a year ago or so, Orlin bought Nick a cameo asking Trisha to talk about what she likes or doesn't like about him or something like that. But fact of the matter is she ghosted on him. So I was on his side and when she finally gave a proper apology, I felt better about that until I started to see these other situations arise with other people within the mukbang community, um, particularly what's going on right now with Stephanie Sue, Veronica Wang, Zach Choi. Um, I'm not really 
in on that that community I don't really watch them but I know a little bit about what's going on there and he's just a mess and it, it really kind of makes me take a step back and look at the Trisha situation where I still feel she was in the wrong um, but definitely with the whole cameo situation and the fact that he wouldn't let it go for two and a half years I really think that he was baiting her for drama um, this whole situation with Stephanie Sue and all the receipts that are coming up it's clear that he he wants drama I've seen some video clips of him on his own channel the crying screaming just like really kind of just erratic behavior it, it's concerning I'm not a fan I, I feel like uh, he needs help I think he needs some serious help I'm probably not gonna be uh, checking out his videos anytime soon if ever um, but I do find the situation that's going on right now kind of interesting as much as I can wrap my head around it but it's pretty confusing. So I probably forgot to mention a few here and there um, in terms of who I love, who I don't so much love. Um, but uh, like I said in my first video, I want to continue to do these videos. I'm sure that you know more is going to come up with this YouTuber, that YouTuber, um, and my thoughts on them. Um, I can't wait to kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of these characters that I've mentioned um, and finally just get get my opinions out there so that they're not just like stuck in here where I can't share them with my friends and family. So yep, that's it for now. That's all I got for you. And um, to the one person who is watching this that's not me, thanks again for um, hanging around uh, this long. Please leave me a comment. Let me know that you watched and I'll see you next time.